and welcome to this online revision session for AQA FP1 in which we will be considering the June 2011 question 9 on conics. Well in the first part of this equation we are given the equation of a parabola which is of the form y equals 1 8 of x squared. You can see the y equals 1 8 of x squared is that curve P running around here. And then it says that Q is the image of P under the reflection y equals x. Now you should remember something about this idea that if it's a reflection in y equals x then the function that represents Q is going to be the inverse function to the function that represents P. And if it's a reflection in the line y equals x, then we can see that the point 0, 0 on P will still be on P, and then there is some other point A, which will also be on the line y equals x, and also on P and Q. Similarly, we are then told there is also a line L, which is a tangent to the curve P, which is also then a tangent to the curve Q. So, part, first part of the, this problem asks us to find the equation of the point A. So we know that it lies on the line y equals x and it lies on this curve y equals 1 8 of x squared. So to find a point of intersection we have to solve those simultaneously, which in other words in this case tells us that x must equal 1 8 of x squared. And so we can see quite clearly here that you could either put 0 in, which would be true, because that would obviously be the point at the origin where the two curves cross, which also is the where the line y equals x passes through. Well, that's not the solution we require, then the other value, which must work from this, must be 8. And so we were asked to write down the coordinate of A, so A must be the point where X is 8, and if it lies on the line Y equals X, it must also therefore have a Y value of 8. So, two marks for this part, so there would be a method mark for establishing an appropriate equation in order to find x, and then obviously an answer mark for getting the correct answer to the problem. Part 2 then asks us to write down the equation of Q. So if Q is a reflection of P, then if we take the equation for P and X is replaced by Y and Y is replaced by X it's quite simple to write down the equation as being X equals 1 8 of Y squared. It's that simple. It's purely using the fact that if we're reflecting in Y equals X, the X and the Y variables are just swapped over. And that will give you your one mark. Finally it says give a reason why the gradient of L, remember L is the point where the line which is a tangent to P and it's also a tangent to Q. So there are two points, one here and one somewhere here which are on both of these curves and they're on this line. Since the curves are a reflection in y equals x then these two points must also be reflections of each other in the line y equals x. And if they're reflected in a line with a gradient of 1 then the gradient of the line between these two points must be negative 1. So what you need to do to get your mark is purely explain 
that it must be negative 1 because of the fact that the diagram, the two curves and the line itself must be of reflections in the line y equals x and that will give you your one mark at that point. Okay, moving on. Part B. You're told that the equation of then of this of the line y equals minus x plus c intersects the parabola at two distinct points. So y equals minus x plus c is another line parallel to L going through some value c. So c is somewhere on this y-axis. And it intersects at two points. So rather than just touching the curve, it intersects at two places. Sorry, on P, not on Q. So it intersects, say, here and here. And it comes down somewhere parallel to this line and it will go through some value C here. Okay, You've got to show that C must be greater than negative 2. Okay, So, for there to be two distinct points, we firstly then got to find the equation that will give us those points. So that's the point at which the curve y equals minus x plus c. I should have said straight line really, shouldn't I? I suppose a straight line is a curve. And the equation y equals 1 8 of x squared is where those two intersect. So to intersect both of those we can write down the fact that 1 8 of x squared has to equal minus x plus c and so if we rearrange this into the standard form of a quadratic multiply through by 8 and rearrange it we will get the fact that x squared plus 8x plus 8c has to equal 0. Now we use our knowledge of the discriminant of a quadratic because if we have two distinct points then b squared minus 4ac has to be greater than naught. Now we've got to be careful here to remember that c there is not the same as the c that we're being using in this question. Remember, b, a and c in here are the coefficients of x squared and x and the constant. So if we substitute those in, we're going to get 8 for b, so that's 64, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times 8c, which is the c value, and that's got to be greater than naught. If we now rearrange this, we're going to get the fact that, what are we going to get? That's 32, so, oops, hang on a moment, I just spotted a mistake. When I rearrange this, this here should have been negative 8c, yes, because the minus x went across become plus and the C went across to become minus. Yep, so that makes that a negative here. Okay, so if we divide through by the 32, that's going to give us 2 plus C is greater than 0. And so C has to be greater than negative 2. Okay, there were three marks for that part, so setting off by solving a pair of simultaneous equations to give us the quadratic, there's a method mark there. For using the fact that b squared minus 4ac, the discriminant's got to be greater than naught, that will give you a mark for stating that somewhere, and then for obtaining 
correctly the fact that C is greater than negative 2 will give you a third mark. Part 2 then says find the coordinate of the points at which L touches the parabola. So we're now going to use part 1 because part 1 was any line whereas we know this particular tangent is a specific line which only has one solution on the curve P and obviously therefore one solution on the curve Q. Now that one solution will occur when B squared minus 4AC was actually equal to naught. So this solution will occur when C is actually equal to negative 2. So in other words, the equation of that tangent is Y equals negative x take away 2. Now we can go back and solve this quadratic that we had in the first part when c is negative 2. So the quadratic that we've got to solve to find this coordinate is x squared plus 8x plus 16, yes it is plus 16, equals naught. And we can see that that will factorise quickly into x plus 4 squared equals naught. Oops, sorry, equals naught. And that happens when x is equal to negative 4. We can then substitute that value of negative 4 back into y equals minus x minus 2. And that tells us that the y value must therefore be 2. So that's one of our points which the tangent touches the curve for P. So we can write that point as negative 4, 2. Then since we know that our second curve was a reflection in the line y equals x and our mirror is also a mirror line for our line L back onto itself, if we therefore just swap the x and the y values over, that gives us our second point at which our tangent touches the curve Q. Okay, so we get again a method mark and an answer mark for this particular solution and then for realising we've got to reflect it and obtain the second value that will be a method mark and an answer mark for doing that. Right. Well, hopefully you found that solution helpful. For more assistance with your maths revision, please go to the Further Maths Support Programme website.